Hold on to your hats, everyone. Um, we've just done part one and part two, and you might think, I'm so exhausted, how can we go like all of that and then again? Well, I promise this is actually a bit of a downhill slope, which is interesting because, um, like I said before, only 10% of the state um, got to the end really of part four, but I actually think um, working wise, it's easier, but, but thinking wise, you, you, may, um, you may start to realize why it was still quite sophisticated. It's part three and part four of a question 16 part question for a reason, okay? So let's go have a go at part three. And in fact, before I even do that, I'm just gonna go all the way back up because I've forgotten entirely what part three was even asking. So let's go and have a look there. I'm gonna grab this just so we can have it nearby. So there's part, scroll, 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 scroll. Here we go. Um, and we don't need part one and two anymore. So let's get that out of the picture. That'll do, all right. What do we do with this beast? Well, let's just read the question and see what we can determine um, just by, just on first blush, right? So it says, let, you know, it just sort of interrupts our part one, two, three, four um, working to say, let J N equal, and there's like a whole new integral and you're like, what, how, how do I deal with this, right? But actually, even though a whole new integral sounds like awful, there's so many clues here that actually help us see the continuity that I think if we pause and slow down, we should be fine, okay? So here's the first thing, right? And they say, let j n equal um, this integral, and it's defined in the same space that our i n integral was, that's that. Part three, even like flat out, it says, using the result of part two, so it's trying to like slap you in the face and tell you, hey, this is, it looks weird and different, but it's, it's a continuity of what you've just done in parts one and part two. And then I want you to look very carefully at what comes up on the end here. This is the result we are trying to prove here in part three. Doesn't that look familiar? You've got this n factorial, it's squared. You've got a two n plus one on the denominator factorial. That sure looks like exactly what we got in the previous question. Of course they said that because continue from part two. It's just that there's this bit missing. There's a two to the two n missing on the numerator. So what I'm gonna do is file that away in my brain and recognize that's kind of my destination. I'm somehow gonna have to do that, but the two to the two n is somehow gonna vanish, right? And then my other thing is, when you have a look at this result, which, or rather this integrand, which apparently has something to do with parts one and two, why is it different? Why does it look so different? And the answer is, well, this is, an this is like a polynomial of some kind, right? X to the N, one minus X to the N. This is a polynomial, but we started with a trigonometric integrand, right? And there is no trigonometry to be seen in this question. So we're gonna pull the same trick that we do over and over again. When something isn't there, you kinda of need to find a way to put it there in a way that doesn't violate what the question is. Thankfully, when you've got an integral and it doesn't look the way you want it, we have a whole like named technique for changing the shape and the, the form of the integral to be something that we can work more easily with. And that is of course integration by substitution, right? Now remember, back in, um, Back in extension one, you learned integration by substitution, but the syllabus very clearly stated, every time you have an integration by substitution, we'll tell you what the substitution is. And part of what lifts you out into extension two integration by substitution is, um, we still make you do it. Um, sometimes we still give you the substitution, but other times, like here, it's like, no, nope, you're on your own. You work this out, extension two students, okay? But I wonder if you can see, there's, there's some clues here that will help us, right? Remember, look at what you've got, and let's go back, oh, how far, maybe I shouldn't have deleted it, here we go. Um, no, I need to go a bit further. That'll do. Um, there's I n, right? Look at what you've got here, sine the two n plus one, two theta. Hmm. What is an appropriate substitution that will help me get to here, or something like this, from here? Here's the J n, right? The easy part is there's gonna to have to be a sign involved, right? Because you're like, oh, no signs here. It's gonna to have to be X equals sine of some variety, right? But if you were to just put in, say, sine theta, okay? You're gonna get a sine n theta here, and then a one minus sine theta 
to the power of n here. And as you go through, it doesn't quite pan out. You don't get the results that you need um, to get to be able to get to part two and its result, which we know we need to have some sort of connection to. Okay, so uh, we could go through that. Uh, in fact, I have a earlier on uh, on this same document. I've got my trial by like I'll just give this a go and see what happens. And I, I eventually hit a brick wall just by doing the substitution. You're like, oh, this is not going to work, right? Instead of sine theta, what I'm going to suggest we introduce, whoops, is instead x equals sine squared theta, right? Now, I know that is not immediately obvious why you would do that. Um, for me, it wasn't. I just tried sine theta and I, you know, tried to see where it led. Um, but I'm going to show you why fairly quickly you realize sine squared theta is much more useful, okay? To do an integration by substitution, we have to substitute three things. Do you remember? Um, you substitute whatever's in the integrand that needs to be changed. You're gonna need to change the variable of integration. So we have a dx at the moment. We're gonna need to change that into a d theta. And thirdly, we're also gonna have to um, change our boundaries, right? They're currently x boundaries. When you look here, that zero and that one implies x equals zero and x equals one. I'm gonna need to change them into theta boundaries, right? So there are the three things. This x equals sine squared theta will take care of the first thing. To do the second thing, we better differentiate. So let's go to dx on d theta, okay? It's just sine theta all squared. It's a pretty straightforward use of chain rule to differentiate. So I'm gonna bring that power down the front. I will reduce the power by one squared down to one. And then I multiply by the inside derivative, which is cos theta. Now, think, 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 think. Is your brain ticking over yet with trigonometric identities that will be useful? This is just the double angle identity for sine. And this is the first sort of like, you know, like we green flag indicator that you're heading in the right direction because you need two thetas in there, right? That's why sine theta um, is not gonna do it for you. Um, and in fact, even trying to put sine two theta in there, it also doesn't quite work out in a nice neat way. So that's why sine squared theta is gonna do the job for us. I've got my integrand will be ready to change my I can change my variable of integration, I need to change my boundaries. So they used to be x equals zero and x equals one. Pretty standard, I hope you can see, you're going to get theta equals zero out of this because we're in sine, and theta equals pi on two for x equals one, okay? All right, so I'm ready to do my substitution. I'm ready to write like, what is Jn in terms of all the trigonometric stuff because it was all polynomial before. So therefore, Jn equals, Integral from, boundaries change, they're from naught to pi on two, that's a relief because those are the same boundaries we had in our part one and two integral. And then, um, if you have a look there, it's gonna be x to the n, which is now sine squared theta to the n, so it's sine, careful with your index laws there, you're gonna multiply your indices, theta, and then it's one minus x to the n, so one minus sine squared to the n. Uh, and then, whoopsie daisy, I haven't quite finished there. On the end there, I now have to change that variable of integration. So you can see dx is equal to sine two theta, d theta, right? So therefore, I'm just gonna write that on the end there, sine two theta, d theta. Okay, so we're gonna go from here. There's some fairly obvious simplification that you can do. Um, for starters, um, this term in here, this one minus sine squared, you're like, hey, hold up. Um, this is the same kind of Pythagorean identity trick that I pulled before, but it's actually gonna be useful to me to reverse it. You're gonna see why in a hot minute. Okay, let's have a go and sort of use this to um, simplify what's going on. Not to pi on two here, uh, sine of two n theta, and then this is gonna be cos squared theta to the n. Cos squared theta to the n, so again, same deal with your index laws here, cos 2n theta, because they multiplied together, um, and then you've got this hanging out on the end there. Okay, can you see where this is going? Can you recognize something, a move we just pulled, that's gonna be useful to simplify this integrand even further? See how um, both of these terms here are raised to the same power, 2n. Right? So I can lump together that product and raise the product to the power of 2n. So that's gonna be from naught to pi on two. Uh, here comes the product. It's just sine theta cos theta. And that's all raised to the power of 2n. And then here comes that sine two theta hanging out there, right? Hold up, does this not look familiar, right? Deja vu, this sine theta cos theta, when you multiply by two, that gives you that double angle, right? I got the same thing here, sine theta, cos theta, I'm just missing the two. 
Hold up, did you hear that? Missing the two? Think about how we're gonna to need to adjust this in order to compensate. If I take this same integral, naught to pi on two, and if I insert the two that I want to use the double angle identity, so I'm just gonna put a two there, and then everything else is the same, sine theta cos theta, that's raised to the power of two n, and then everything else hanging out there. We've pulled this trick a thousand times, right? If you change an integrand, you like int introduce some kind of constant coefficient to make it into a form that's nice. Uh, if you multiply by some constant coefficient inside, you've got to divide by that same constant coefficient. What is that constant coefficient in this case? Just be careful. There's a two there, but it's not just a two, is it? It's not just one of them. How many twos have we actually multiplied the integrand by? And the answer is, we've multiplied by two n of them, right? So if I've multiplied that many times, I also need to divide that many times. So now you can see it's all balanced out. Oopsie daisy, not to, to the n, it's to the two n, right? That's a bit embarrassing. So I've got all the twos in here, making this the nice double angle identity. And then I've got the, all the twos out here, just keeping my, um, my whole thing balanced and I haven't changed it. Uh, and this is going to make everything work out nice and neatly for me in the end, right? One over two to the two n, what's gonna happen in here, not to pi on two, this is sine two theta, right? So it's sine two theta, but it's been raised to the power of two n, two theta. And then all of this here. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> Does this look familiar? Does it look full circle to you? Is this not exactly the trick that I pulled all the way back in part one? Can you remember how long ago that was? Um, all the way back in part one to break this thing apart so we could handle it with integration by parts, remember that? But I don't wanna do that anymore. I wanna go back in the opposite direction. I wanna go back to I n, right? So therefore I'm gonna say, hold up, whoopsie daisy. I'm gonna put this all back together. This is equal to naught to pi on two and the power, the indices rather, can be combined. Two n plus one, two theta d theta. This disastrous thing here, this whole thing here, that is I n. You're like, I can't believe, I was watching a movie recently with my kids called Onward, and they do this, the main characters go on this big long quest throughout the whole entire movie, and they arrive at the end of the quest, and they're like, whoa, we made it. And literally, the end of their quest is they've gone back home. And that's exactly what you've done here. You've gone back home, and so I can say, well, that's one on to the two n times I n. But all of the work we've done, remember the question part three said, here it is, using the result of part two or otherwise, I haven't used part two yet, so let's do that. Um, part two is here. This is part two, that, I should have said that, that's I n, right? So therefore, let's just drag this entire thing into this argument, okay, here we go. Uh, this is equal to one over two to the two n, multiplied by what I already know from part two, that's what I n is equal to. So I'll even say from part two. And look at that, lo and behold, this two over two n that I had to divide by to do this integration successfully, it nicely cancels with that extra two to the two n up on the numerator there all along. So what do you end up with? n factorial squared all over this other factorial, 2n plus 1 factorial, as required. Whoa.